The Pulse School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BASF. Brittany Warner here with realagriculture.com. Welcome back to another episode of our Pulse School. Today we are joined by Director of Research and Development with Saskatchewan Pulse Growers, Sherilyn Phelps. How are you today, Sherilyn? I'm doing great. Thanks, Brittany. Absolutely. So today we're talking all about MRLs. Now for our viewers and listeners, first and foremost, what is an MRL and uh, why do they matter in pulse crops? Great question. So MRL stands for maximum residue limit. And so that's really the maximum amount of a pesticide that you can expect to see on seed if you know labels were followed so it's just kind of a baseline that say Canada guarantees our pulses will say peas have a maximum residue limit of X for this product that they're looking at applying so it's really used for um, export purposes in terms of guaranteeing what our Canadian pulses are as they're exported to other countries okay so now uh, the growers need to take extra precautions when we're talking about rates that we're spraying onto our pulse crops and or even timing. If you spray later in the year, is your MRL going to be higher? Um, or sorry, is your residue going to be higher? How does that work and translate? Those are great questions. Um, so the maximum residue limit based on the label, right? So as long as a grower is following what the label has, so the right rate at the right timing, using the right product for the right past all those sort of things they should be fine they should be well within the maximum residue limits where we start to see residues probably creeping up is if growers are using higher rates they're going later than what the the label states um, so those are kind of two situations where you know a residue could be somewhat higher than what we're guaranteeing and and then obviously if it's off off label that's the concern for sure so when uh, producers are it's time for harvest they're bringing their truckloads in to their buyer, will it be determined at that point if those MRLs fit within Canadian standards? In terms of the testing for the maximum residue limits, those are usually done on container loads um, and, and can be traced right back to a grower's individual shipment. But typically those are done by the processors as they're getting ready for the export to make sure that their shipments are on side. Not necessarily is every truckload going in being evaluated, but samples are being kept that they can trace back to where, where those um, residues might come into play if you know, a shipment is showing higher MRLs, it won't leave to the exporting country if it's above what the export MRLs are set. Perfect. Thanks so much for uh, joining us today, Sherry Lynn. Thanks for having me. Thanks.